Hello there. How are you? Welcome to the class of mathematics presented by Maths for You by Tor Rama. May I come in? Hello everyone. Good morning. Today we will discuss algebraic function. What is algebraic function? A function f of x is said to be algebraic if it can be constructed using algebraic operations, such as adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing or taking roots, starting with polynomials. Polynomial function Dears, a polynomial function denoted by p and of x, and is a function of the form f of x is equal to p in of x is equal to a in x rays n plus a in minus 1 x rays n minus 1 plus a in minus 2 x rays n minus 2 plus ellipses plus a3 x rays 3 plus a2 x rays 2 plus a1 x plus a naught with n is a non-negative integer and a n a n minus 1 a n minus 2 ellipses a a 2 a 1 a naught are constants if a n is not equal to 0 then the integer n is called the degree of the polynomial the constant a n is called the leading coefficient and the constant a naught is called the constant term of the polynomial function. In particular, if n is equal to 0, then f of x is equal to a naught, which is a constant function, which we have discussed in detail in our previous lecture. If n is equal to 1, we get a function called linear function that is f of x equal to a one x plus a naught if n is equal to two we get a quadratic function that is f of x equals a two x square plus a one x plus a naught and we obtain a cubic function for n is equal to 3 that is f of x equals a3 x cubed plus a2 x square plus a1x plus a naught and so on sir what is the domain and range of polynomial function very good question. The domain of any polynomial function is the set of all real numbers. That is, x belongs to an open interval negative infinity to positive infinity. Functions of even degree will have a bounded range. From below if the leading coefficient is positive, from above if it's negative. And functions of a degree will have range y belongs to negative infinity to positive infinity. Excuse me, sir. What about the graph of the polynomial function? I am coming to that. But let me discuss something before that. As we know that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of the set of real numbers and the points lying on the number line. Thus we can conclude that the number line represents the whole set of real numbers if one arrow is towards negative infinity and the other is towards the positive infinity. Let us consider the example of crops, which represents the set of real numbers. Dears, you will see in the upcoming graphs of straight lines and curves that all the points lying on them represents the set of all real numbers. Because from the graphs, it is quite visual that one end of the graphs pointing towards the negative infinity while the other towards the positive infinity.
let us consider examples of graphs which do not represents the whole set of real numbers as we can see from them that both the ending of the curves pointing toward either positive infinities or negative infinities Henry I am coming toward your question now that how to draw the graph of a polynomial function You can use a handy test called the leading coefficient test which helps you figure out how the polynomial begins and ends the degree and leading coefficient of a polynomial always explain the end behavior of its graph The following remarks will be helpful while drawing the graph of a polynomial function If the degree of the polynomial is even and the leading coefficient is positive both ends of the graph point up If the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative both ends of the graph point down If the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive the left side of the graph points down and the right side points up If the degree is odd and the leading coefficient is negative the left side of the graph points up and the right side points down The figure displays this concept in correct mathematical terms Dears So far we have understood that a polynomial of degree 1 is called linear polynomial. A polynomial of degree 2 is called quadratic polynomial. A cubic polynomial is one that has degree 3. Likewise degree 4 and degree 5 polynomials are called quadratic and quintic polynomials respectively. In the next chart you can see the graphs of linear, quadratic, cubic quadratic and quintic polynomials respectively Now let us discuss the linear and quadratic functions their domain and range in detail Linear function The function defined by the equation y equals to f of x is equal to a into x plus b where a is not equal to 0 is called linear function In this linear equation the exponent of both the independent and dependent variables x and y is unity and because of this its graph is a straight line now to draw the graph of the linear function first we consider the cartesian coordinate plane as we know that when two lines intersect each other at a right angle it constitute the coordinate plane in linear function y is equal to a times x plus b if a and b are both positive then the graph of the linear function will make an intercept b unit above the x axis and the graph will slightly tilt toward the right if a is positive and b equals 0 then the graph will remain tilt toward the right and it will pass through the origin also if a is positive and b is negative then the graph will make an intercept b unit down the x axis and will remain tilt toward the right as the domain variable x takes the values along the positive x axis and moves up to positive infinity similarly it takes values on the negative x axis and runs up to negative infinity so through this we conclude that the domain of the linear function is the set of all real numbers Similarly the range variable y takes the value along the line y is equal to ax plus b which points toward positive infinity and negative infinity so we can conclude that the range of the linear function is the set of real numbers Now in the equation y is equal to ax plus b if a is negative and b is positive then the graph of the function will be 
a straight line and tilt toward the left and making an intercept B above the x axis on y axis also if a is negative and b become zero then the graph will pass through the origin and if both a and b are negative the graph will make an intercept b unit down the x axis on y axis and it will remain tilt toward the left So can we call a constant function a linear function? The answer to this question is yes. Why? Because you can see that the graph of a constant function is also a straight line. As we know that it is above the x-axis when the constant is positive and it will coincide with the x-axis when the constant is zero and the graph will be below the x-axis when the constant involved in the constant function is negative. Here the domain of the constant function is remain as the set of all the real numbers but the range is confined to the constant involved in the function now let us move toward another polynomial function called the quadratic function okay what is quadratic function quadratic function is a function defined by the equation f of x is equal to ax square plus bx plus c where the leading coefficient a is not equal to 0 this restriction is because if a is equal to 0 then the quadratic function will reduce to the linear function if a is equal to 0 we would lose the squared term and have the linear function of the form f of x equals b times x plus c like linear function quadratic functions have the set of real numbers for their domain recall that the domain of a function is the set of all real numbers for which the function is defined dears keep in mind that the graph of a quadratic function is a u-shaped curve called the parabola Now let us draw the graph of the quadratic function For that one must keep in mind that if a is positive then the graph will open up and if a is negative then the graph will open down To graph a parabola, it is helpful to begin by writing the quadratic function in the following form using the process of completing the square. It is to be noticed that while completing the square, addition and subtraction the square of the half the coefficient of x within the parentheses instead of adding the value to each side of the equation. Simplification and algebraic manipulation gives this result. This form is especially convenient for sketching a parabola because it identifies the vertex of the parabola as h k and the equation of the line of symmetry x equals negative b upon 2 a where h and k are respectively given by The above standard form of a quadratic function identifies four basic transformations of the graph of the quadratic function. The factor produces a vertical stretch or shrink. If a is less than 0 that is negative 
the graph is reflected in the x-axis. The factor represents a horizontal shift of h units. The shift is to the right if h is negative and to the left if h is positive. The term k represents a vertical shift of k units. The shift is above if k is positive and is below if k is negative. From all these discussion, we have come to know that the domain of the quadratic function is the set of all real numbers and its range depend upon a factor. If the factor A is positive, then the graph opens up, and in this case the range of the quadratic function is. If the factor A is negative, then the graph of the quadratic function opens down, and in this situation the range will be. And that's all for today lecture. Thanks for watching and listening. I hope you will have now a clear idea about the polynomial functions.